Hello and welcome to my bench. My name is Jerry, but you should know that because hopefully you've been watching my videos. Uh, this is going to be part of the Jerry's Basic Jewelry Bench Work series. This uh, video will be posted on the class handouts page and it will be also on a uh, page about aglets on my website. So go to livingstonjewelers.com slash aglets. Uh, that should tell you right now what this short little video was going to be about. Uh, I've been working on researching historical manufacturing techniques for how they used to make aglets. And uh, this video is part of that. Uh, it's hard to explain how to do all the work, so I thought I would show you on forming a uh, 14th to 16th century type 1 aglet. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to my website. Though There will be more information there. Uh, this is for reenactors, theater people, movie people, whoever needs to make aglets. Um, okay, now an aglet is the little brass end that you put on a cord. Uh, uh, this is the size most people use the, to help show what I'm doing. I'm making one that's a little bigger, so a little bigger diameter, so you can see what I'm doing. So let's get started. Now, you can do this uh, at home. I would recommend getting a uh, like a four by four. This one's been shaped a few times for various things. Uh, but to make a little block to work from at home. Uh, a little piece of oak 4x4 four four, uh, with a little groove cut in here for your uh, uh, mandrel to fit in. There's another smaller groove over here uh, and one that's basically just an indent. It's, it's barely anything. So uh, Make those before you start because you're going to be using them. I'm going to use my bench pin because that's what I'm used to. Uh, okay, first step in forming your aglet, once you've got the pattern and everything cut out, you want to put it on a little piece of leather. Now the leather keeps you from cutting your fingers when you're bending this, preforming the uh, blank over your mandrel. So taking just very lightly, preform this. You want to try and keep this as straight as possible. You're not trying to do all the work here, you're just trying to get a little bend started. See how that's just just barely shaped and it's really loose. It goes all the way down on the mandrel because it's really loose. Okay, put your leather to the side, grab your uh, burnishing tool. Uh, you can use something like this with a little slot in there. There will be instructions on my website on how to make these, by the way, or I might be selling them. I'm not sure which yet. Okay, you want to put your aglet in here, stand it up, and bend over just the tip, okay? You don't want to burnish the whole thing yet. You want to do just the tip. We're just looking at that first, about one-third of the aglet, okay? So you just take your burnishing tool and boom you just and then use whichever side works best and you bend it over and i'm going to use some magnification because my eyesight is getting worse through the years okay now uh, you want to bend this down and you don't want you don't want this shoved all the way down the mandrel. You want this up a little bit so it's loose, so you have room for the metal to bend down to the mandrel and come back a little bit, because it's going to want to develop a little work hardening and a little spring. So you want to bend that over, okay? So you can see it's just the tip, okay? I'm going to put this over here. If you're ambidextrous, you can probably flip to the other side and do this. I've got it. I'm I flip over here. So I've got another little slot here. And this is where you have to start thinking. You want this side to bend down to touch that side. And so you have to kind of eyeball where you want this on the mandrel. And then you 
just bend over that first piece. Okay, it's touching right at the very end, but now it's spreading a little bit. So what we want to do is pull this up the aglet just a little bit. I think I want to bend this side. And then we bend this side a little more. I pulled the mandrel out and pulled it out a little more. I'm literally just pulling, you know, you can see how I'm just basically kind of pulling the aglet back and forth on the mandrel just a little bit. So now we have the ends touching, okay? And we've got that seam started. So I just gently pull this on there and then take your burnishing tool and you should be able to just run it once or twice. center part to smooth that out a little bit and this seam here should be very straight and it should be going straight down the mandrel but a lot of times it doesn't so this one is going to be very slightly off center that's fine in period a lot of them were and a lot of the seams overlapped a lot of them didn't overlap or they overlapped it just a spot. It's all good. So it's all period. There, there's examples of everything. Now what you want to do is you want to pull this out a little bit on the mandrel so it's loose and then start working the back side down, the other side. Okay. And you want to make sure this is pulled out enough to where when you push this down that the top of the mandrel seam is going to start coming together. It's getting there, it's not quite. So now we move this down a little bit. So you can roll that way uh, and then you just kind of burnish this down and then you use the wide part of your aglet tool and you just kind of roll this as it's rolling and you want this to be a little loose on the mandrel and what you end up with is an aglet where the seam is meeting this one it turns a little bit from here and goes a little bit this way very very little uh, the seam's almost being here. You can just kind of squeeze that together with your finger to get it to finish. And that's as good as a lot of them were in period. So uh, you have two holes here for attaching it, and you're all set. You have a little sharp point there, so what you might want to do, in, you might want to sit and file that off. Uh, in period, they would have had no, like a fairly coarse file or a whetstone. And let's just use a file, it makes life easier. Quickly bring that point down. There you go. And now there's no little point sticking up. When your seam is absolutely straight, you're not going to have to worry about those points being uneven. But when the metal twists like that, and it will a lot of times, uh, uh, you're going to end up with a point that's sticking up just a little bit. Don't worry about it. 
you know, there's again lots of period examples, but it can catch on stuff. So you might want to take and just um, uh, file it off real quick. And there you have it, an aglet. All you have to do is polish it real quick and you're done. Now, if you're sitting here going, I couldn't see a bloody thing you did. I can't see anything. You know, that doesn't make sense. I didn't see anything. Well, I decided to make one that's a little bigger. So, that's the pattern. If you can't see what I'm doing when I'm forming this one, give it up. You shouldn't be doing this without supervision. Okay, so what I did is I used my biggest mandrel, and uh, if you can see, geez, can I get the whole thing in the picture? I used my biggest mandrel and just you know, treated it like it was the little uh, mandrel that I was forming on before. So you can see the difference. So again, uh, well, I'm not going to use a piece of leather because I don't have one that big in the shop uh, to form this around. But what you want to do is you want to just gently, you know, let's do this like this. You want to gently form your metal around the mandrel. Okay, so you don't want it to be too tight, just just kind of loose on there, okay? Uh, now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. Okay, I'm not going to be using the pen because I'm going to be doing a lot of forming here. And I should have thought about this earlier, but I'm not sure what to form this with. So, let's use... What do I have? Yeah, let's just use my rawhide mallet. Okay, so we're just working on the tip. Just want to bring this tip over. Okay, we're just bringing the tip over, okay? That's all you're doing, just bringing this little bit of the tip over. Okay, and you want to <coughs> bring this out on the mandrel enough to where this edge here is going to meet this edge here, okay? This is the seam that you're making. These metal edges become the seam. So you want to make sure this is pulled out enough on the mandrel so that when this metal comes down, it can spring back a little bit, okay? And uh, that's going to allow it to bend a little more to make this circumference, this circle here. So if you have this up really tight, this isn't going to make that distance. So pull this out a little bit and kind of eyeball it. And I've gotten used to these little ones. I think that is about right. So take and bend this down. Ooh, I wasn't even close on eyeballing that. Okay, so let's pull this back here. And like I said, we're just working for that first little piece of the uh, mandrel. And just that first little piece of the mandrel, that first little bit of metal. And well, we're going to cheat a little bit. I guess you can do this with the real ones too. The little ones, they're a lot thinner than this. Uh, I think my metal is just, because it's so big, it's just work hardening a little quicker. Okay. Okay, so what you're looking for is something that's similar to this, where the metal is touching on these sides here. Uh, fairly close to each other and where it starts to kind of spread up into here. Uh, <clears throat> this here will guide when you 
put this on the mandrel and burnish this. This will guide the rest of this to lay in the right position. So let's put the mandrel back in there. And just keep working. there and I'm not sure why. The thing has to do with the fact that I'm using such a large piece of metal. Okay, see how I just kind of stroked that flat? Okay. So, well, our seam is opening a little bit. So, what you have now is a seam that's fairly straight. And when you put the mandrel in there, you'll see that this lies pretty much straight up and down on, uh, let's see if you can get this all in the video, this lies pretty much straight up and down the length of the mandrel. It doesn't, it doesn't corkscrew around. Okay, so now we pull this out a little bit because you want this loose. You don't want this, you don't want this jammed on there tight. Remember, keep this a little loose. And start with the other side. Okay. Now, what you might want to do is just burnish it a little bit. Make sure that make sure your finger is just pushing this enough to keep this loose on there. And help pull this down. Okay. Okay. Now, huh, my tip is opening up, but I don't think that was supposed to happen. So let's burnish this down a little bit more on the tip. Okay, now what you should have at this point, and excuse the little differences for having a huge piece of metal versus a little one. Okay. I think I've got some differences because literally just because of the thickness of the metal okay so what you should have now is a finished aglet and this one is big enough where you could probably use it to anchor a boat but or a viking ship even though i don't think they were period back then but they may have been and if you didn't see what i was doing there well like i said but uh, anyways, that concludes this little uh, uh, demonstration on how to make a period aglet. And, oops. and I hope you enjoyed it and keep watching my videos. And remember, handouts will be on my class page and this one in particular. Uh, go to the webpage that's livingstonjewelers.com slash aglets. Thank you very much.